Throw it at CH. All right, praise God. So we're talking about returning to the garden and the song, The Garden of Prayer. And so uh, life is... Uh, the Happy Goodman family sing this song too. Uh, life is like a, a mountain railway with an engineer that's brave. And you must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. But life... Uh, is like a locomotive, and so we have a locomotive that we travel uh, in our lifetime, and it runs on two tracks, just like a train track. And how many of you ever know? You ever been on a train and rode on a train? Did you notice there's two rails? And uh, do you notice when you looked at those rails, they they are parallel, and uh, they have to be parallel for the train to keep going down the track. If one rail uh, turns the wrong way, there's going to be a derailment. And so uh, this is the way it is in our life. We can uh, get back to the garden by traveling down life's locomotive, but uh, one rail is what we pray and one rail is what we say. And when we pray something, we've got to stick with it and say it. We can't pray one thing and get up from praying and say, Oh, may it sure looking terrible today. We've got to pray and say the same thing. Amen? And so there's power in prayer as long as, and also power in our saying or our confession. And we know Christianity is called the Great Confession. And uh, so our track is laid to take us back to the garden when Jesus said, pray, your kingdom come, you will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Uh, we're going to look at that some more and talk about that some more. But uh, that's how we get to where God wants us to be is by getting our locomotive going and guess what? We got the power of the Spirit to propel our locomotive and keep it going, don't we? And you remember Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, You shall receive power after, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we have the power of the Spirit to keep our locomotive charged up and rolling down the track. But me and you are responsible to keep our rails parallel. And we mentioned this, I think, recently too. What keeps the rails secure? They're cross ties. Well, when I think of cross ties, I think of Jesus hung on the cross to tie us together. See, we can, we can tie our praying and our saying together on the cross, based on the cross. What I pray has to be based on the price Jesus paid on the cross. What I say has to match up with what Jesus paid on the cross. Amen? So my two rails, our two rails uh, are held together securely and parallel by the cross ties. And then uh, I think this was mentioned recently too. What, uh, what, what holds uh, our rails to the cross ties? Railroad spikes. Well, when you think of the spikes... It reminds me of Jesus hanging on the cross, the spikes they put in his hands and the spike in his feet. And this, we're all held together by the cross and the plan of redemption that Jesus paid for us. And what we pray and what we say to keep our locomotive going the right way. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, it's enough to get, motivate you to want to pray, isn't it? Well, Jesus said, my house shall be called, what? A house of prayer. So, uh, Matthew chapter 16, let's look at that. We've looked at it many times, and we'll look at it much more. Matthew 16, 15. Jesus said unto his disciples, Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter spoke up and he said, Lord, you're, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, You're blessed, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. 
In other words, Peter, you just got a revelation of truth and information of who I am. Amen? And uh, heaven has just revealed this to you. Now, I, I see this. Jesus told them in six, Matthew 6, pray, your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And now Peter's just got a revelation from heaven on earth to start the ball rolling, to start the locomotive going down the track. Can you say amen to that? Because that's how it works. And uh, he said, uh, you just, my Father in heaven revealed this to you. And then verse 18, and I say unto you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we know we're living in days when the gates of hell are still trying to prevail against Christ, the anointed one, his anointing, and the church. But we've got Jesus' words on it, and what did he say? They shall not prevail. Shall not. And so uh, then 19, verse 19, And Jesus said, I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now what is keys? What do keys represent? Authority. I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now let's put, go back to what we just said. Jesus said to pray, Matthew 6, When you pray, Pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, now I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Here's the keys, the authority to get heaven to earth. And that's what he said, wasn't it? You, now you've got the authority to bring heaven down to earth. Praise God. How many of you know we need some heaven on earth this day and time? Praise God. There's a lot of hell on earth because we've allowed the devil to manifest through people. So his, God and Satan both have to work in a physical world through physical people. they got to have a body. So it's up to me and you who we're going to let operate in our body. How about you? Why don't we let God have control of our bodies? And we can pray and say, Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we see here, Jesus said, I give you the keys, the authority to bring heaven down to earth. Praise God. Amen. Well, that's exciting. Now, we have a part to play in that, don't we? And he said, I give you the keys. Whatever, here's the keys. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven now I really like what the Amplified does to that verse Amplified lets us know this whatever you bind or prohibit there's other words that, that the Greek word means there whatever you uh, bind to fasten, to tie, to prohibit. Whatever you bind on earth must have already been bound and prohibited in heaven. Isn't that good? So, how am I going to know what to bind? i got to find out what's going on in heaven. i got to find out what's been bound in heaven. Well, how am I going to find that out? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Bible tells me so. See, Jesus told us, he said, I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. I'm telling you what, after Satan tried his tricks in heaven and he said, I'm going to become more higher than God, God didn't put up with it, did he? He kicked him out. He, he bound him. He prohibited him from operating in heaven and so along with that a third a third of the angels were caught up in it too they all had to go leave with him didn't he so god uh bound sin and transgression and darkness out of heaven and so that's why uh, what else did he what else did he kick out of heaven anything and everything the devil represents did you know there's no sickness in heaven I don't think anybody would have a problem with that, do, do you? I don't think anybody would say, well, how do you know there's not? 
Well, you read your Bible, you can find out there's not, can't you? Did you know there's no poverty in heaven? So poverty has been prohibited, right? Sickness has been prohibited in heaven. And Jesus told Peter, I'll give you the keys, the authority, and whatever's been prohibited in heaven, you can prohibit it on earth. See, we've not done a great job on that yet, have we? Oh, but praise God, the Spirit of God's working with the people of God and the church of God to get the job done. Amen. And that's why prayer is so important there during this time. Did you know this nation, America, the United States of America, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, as long as this nation is under God, it's going to be indivisible. But when somebody says they're going to take under God out of our flag, you know what that's saying? They're not going to submit to God. When you don't submit to God, you're submitting to the other God. You're submitting to the devil, and you're bringing hell in your life. That's right. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. If you can't say amen, say oh me. It's true. And so uh, that's why prayer is so important. This nation, America, the United States. Everybody say United. United. These states are united. We're still calling this nation who it is because it was grounded and founded on God's Word by God's Spirit and God's people, and it's grounded and founded on the truth of God's Word, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, even though they're trying. They cannot win. They shall not prevail against it. And this uh, nation, United States of America, was birthed, was birthed, by the first great awakening. Well, you know what we need today? Let me, just, let me just give us a clue. I think we know this. But no political party or no politician is going to solve the problem. I tell you, the problem is going to be solved with another great awakening. We need another great awakening. This country needs to wake up to God. And so, but the first great awakening is what allowed America to be birthed. So we're praying for a spirit of prayer to pray in a second great awakening. And we're not the only ones. People all over this country, all over this nation, other parts of the world are praying the same thing. Amen? And isn't it good that there's some people in other countries that's got more sense than some of these people act like they got in our country? But praise God for it. They've got some spiritual sense, you know. Some of them know God. Hallelujah. And so we're praying for a, another great awakening, which like I'm gonna say, I like to say it this way. The first great awakening will cause the birth of America, and this other great awakening will bring about a rebirth of America. I believe it's time for America to be rebirthed. You could say it this way. It's time for America to be born again. Glory to God. Jesus said you must be born again, didn't he? Glory to God. I believe you ought to get excited. <clears throat> Amen. The beautiful garden of prayer. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer. That's the church prays and things happen. And so let's look at some things that happen. Now I really like what Jesus said, John 15, 7. John 15, 7, Jesus said this, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it will be done unto you. We've all been there and I know sometimes people are still there and they say, well, you, you think you can pray for a Cadillac and get it? Uh, if the Word of God abides in you and the Spirit of God tells you to pray for a Cadillac, you can pray for one and get it. But if the Word of God's not abiding in you and the Spirit of God is not leading you to pray for a Cadillac, you can pray all you want to and you don't get it. It's Spirit-indicted prayers. It's Spirit-led prayers. It's Spirit uh, prayers by the Spirit that line up with God's Word because God's Spirit and God's Word are always parallel. You talk about God's locomotive. His Word and His Spirit are always in line. Amen? 
And so uh, there's the key. We have to let the word of Christ dwell in us. Now, Paul said it in Colossians 3.16. The first word is let. There's an understood subject in that sentence. What is the understood subject? You. Me. I got to let it. He said Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Well, what did Jesus say? We just read it, John 15, 7. If you abide in me and you let my words abide in you, see, we got to let it. See, a lot of times we've, been, we've all been guilty and been there. Uh, we want to pray and get, get things done our way, but we're not letting, we're not giving the word any time, are we? We're not giving God any time, are we? We're not spending time with God in the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Amen. And so uh, we have to do that. Jesus meant what he said. My house is called a house of prayer. Well, so uh, the power of prayer is released in and through those who pray. I'm going to say it again. You ready to listen to it one more time? Say, say it. Tell me, tell me to say it again. Amen. All right, I'm going to say it. Thank you. The, the power of prayer is released in and through the people who pray. Praise God they do. Let's look at Acts chapter 12. We're going to look at some uh, examples here in the Bible. Can you think of any better place to look than in the Bible <laughs> for examples of God's Word? Amen. Acts 12, 5. You remember the story in Acts 12. Herod put Peter in prison. And uh, he, was gonna, he was going to kill him too, but he put him in prison and he, he, he uh, assigned uh, guards to keep him and put him in you know, stocks and bound him. And, and uh, so here he is in jail in the, in the prison. But the verse 5 says, Peter was kept in prison. But look at this. But prayer, everybody say prayer. Prayer was made. Well, now let's think about that. What, how do you make prayer? Well, you just pray. How is prayer made? By God's people. Well, how do God's people make prayer? They pray God's word. The Word of God is the most effective prayer anybody can pray. Amen? And we've said this before. Praise and giving thanks and praise is the highest form of prayer. If we want to make sure God hears us, we first pray His Word, and we second give Him praise. Amen? And so prayer was made by the church. It, notice it says earnestly. You know, there's a difference in praying half-heartedly and praying earnestly. We all know the meaning of earnest, don't we? I'm not talking about earnest T. I'm talking about earnestly. <laughs> earnestly, <coughs> sincerely, <coughs> heartfelt prayer, continual prayer is another good way. Continual prayer, you know. We can't just go once a month. Let's go pray about five minutes today, and then we'll pick up next month. No, that's not prayer. It's earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer. And because the church was praying earnestly, the angel, God sent an angel down there to the jailhouse. And he woke Peter up and said, get up and put your sandals on, and we're getting out of here. The, the, door, the door's open, and... And so he led Peter out, and you remember the story, Peter goes and knocks on the door at the house there where they're praying, the church is in the house praying, and Rhoda comes through the door, and she don't even open it. She just, she heard, she said, that's Peter's voice, I recognize that. She runs back and tells everybody, she don't even let him in, she just keeps the door shut. Hey, Peter's at the door, oh, he's not, he's in jail. <laughs> but the power of prayer of the church released God's man. Well, I tell you what, God's got some people in office today that we're praying for. 
And I'll tell you what, they, they've been under attack from the kingdom of darkness. And, and this other evil spirits working through certain <laughs> political people have tried to imprison our president. But the power of prayer in the church is going to have the same results, the same effects as it did when Peter was set free. Can anybody say amen to that? And if we really believe it, you know what that makes me want to do? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and just keep praying. Amen. You know? I mean, you can pray You can pray as you're walking along the day. I was praying as I'm driving today. You know, praying down the road. Praying in the Spirit. You know, you can drive and pray. You know, but they didn't have cars in Bible days. If they had of it, it would have been in there. It, you know, it says watch and pray. If they had cars back then, it would have said drive and pray. You know? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> well... Then I'm thinking of uh, Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. Look over at Acts chapter 10. And, uh, of course, Peter's involved in, in this one, too. As a result of Cornelius being a person of prayer, God shows Peter a vision and, t and tells him there's men coming to see you and you go with them to this Gentile's house, and they're waiting to hear words from you. In other words, will you, my goodness, look at Cornelius there, Acts 10. Verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, and he gave much alms to the people. And look at this, he prayed to God, how often? Does that sound like a man of prayer? We better read that again. He, and he, he did what? He prayed. He did what? He prayed. Who did he pray to? God. How often? Always. That sounds like continual prayer to me. And uh, verse 3, he saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, and the angel of the Lord came unto him and said to Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid. And he said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers. Oh, my goodness. Verse 4. Look what he said. The angel told him, Cornelius, your prayers. Everybody say, Your prayers. Your prayers and your alms or your givings. How many of you know when you pray, you have to give time to pray? Prayer is considered giving, don't you think so? It takes time to pray. Uh, I know last night I was outside doing some things in my little building, moving things around, and it wasn't what you call hot, but it don't, it don't take me long to get sweaty. I mean, it's just something about it. I get active. I get My wife come home and said, it's about time to go pray. I said, well, I, I sure smell like it, don't I? So I had to do a sponge bath real quick. You know, it, it is. It, it's, uh, it's time involved in praying, isn't it? And, uh, and you know, it, you can come. It don't matter if you spray a little deodorant or whatever. <laughs> but notice here, he said, uh, your prayers, in verse 4, are come up for a memorial. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. What does that mean? It means God remembers the prayers of the saints. Now, I won't say this because I know what I'm talking about. God remembers the times we prayed, and He remembers the times we felt like we didn't get anywhere with our prayers. You ever been there? You ever felt like it's just a dry prayer, and you think, my Lord, I, I don't even know if it did me any good to come. But the effectual, fervent, Heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous person makes tremendous power available, dynamic, and it's working. James 5, 16. Amen. And so that's what the angel told Cornelius. And so uh, that's what enabled Peter to be led to Cornelius' house. And I really like what he said. Uh, he told him, he says, uh, they're sending for you. They want you to come to his house and hear words. You ever thought about that? 
words were so important to Cornelius that he fasted and prayed and gave alms continually until God sent someone to give him a word. Tell him words. I tell you what, if we could get the value of God's word in us that much like Cornelius had it, we'd see some results like Cornelius saw. <laughs> it's just words. Yeah, but it's whose words is it? It's God's word. Amen. The Bible says God's word is life to those who find it and health to all their flesh. How valuable is that? Huh? That's valuable. More than millions of dollars, isn't it? Well, thank God for that. And uh, so we see here, oh, one more. Let's look at this real quick. Isaiah 32, or Isaiah 38, verse 2. Now, Hezekiah was sick, and he told Isaiah to go tell him, Get your house in order, Hezekiah, because you're going to die. Isaiah 38, verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and what did he do? He prayed. Who did he pray to? He prayed to the Lord. That was, and so uh, God, God told him, he says, Isaiah, go back, go tell Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer. Glory to God. I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. And I'm going to add 15 years. <laughs> Glory to God. That was under the old covenant. Yeah. Hebrews 8, 6 tells us that Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant. Established on better promises. If, if prayer got Hezekiah 15 extra years in the Old Covenant, I wonder how much it'll get us in the New Covenant. Glory to God. Amen. Well, this is good news. Some things are prayed about, and some things just have to be prayed out. And that's where we need the help of the Holy Spirit, don't we? Praying in the Spirit. Some things we don't know how to pray. You can look this up, Romans 8, 26, 27. The Spirit makes intercessions with, for the saints with groanings that cannot be uttered. Verse 27, He that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit, for he makes intercession for the saints according to God's will. Well, that's enough to make you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost and pray in other tongues, isn't it? Because he's praying out the plan of God for us. And just because we've been filled, we need to what? Be being filled. You got how much gas is in your tank, John? Be being filled. Did you fill it up lately? Yesterday, Yesterday be being filled. <laughs> so here's what we're praying, and here's what we're saying, and this is what we're passing along. Pray for a spirit of prayer that will enable us to pray another great awakening. Amen. And we also see in the Garden of Gethsemane in Matthew 26. Matthew 26, Jesus went to the garden. Now guess what it was? Garden Gethsemane was a garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. Amen. And so you remember what he told his disciples? Watch. And I'm going to go yonder and pray. Well, of course, he came back and they were sleeping. And, you know, later on he told them, he said... Uh, Watch and pray so you enter not into temptation. The Spirit is willing. Oh, listen to this. How many of us can relate to this? The Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. See, this flesh really tries to give us a problem. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody out there? But if we will feed our spirit man faith food, oh my goodness. There's another good verse. Write it down. Look at it. Jude 20. Jude only has one chapter. So this is verse 20. And here's what he said in Jude 20. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He went on to say this. Keep yourself in the love of God. Praying in the Holy Ghost builds us up. It also keeps us in the love of God, and it also keeps us looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ. I need all three of them. I need to be built up. I need to be kept in the love of God. 
because sometimes it ain't easy to love people. Anybody notice that? And I need a lot of mercy. How about you? Well, we can do that according to Jude 20. Praise God. Well, anyway, he told his disciples, could you not watch with me for one hour? That's in Matthew 26 and verses 36 through 41. Could you not watch with me one hour? Spirit's willing. Flesh is weak. <laughs> so what are we going to do? Well, we got to just take charge of our flesh, don't we? Well, we got the greater one. Where's he live? On the inside of us to help us. And so if you've been listening by social media tonight to us and you've never experienced what we've been talking about, uh, Jesus said in John 3, 3, you must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. If you've never been born again, then we want to invite you to be born again tonight. Jesus would like for you to have you in his family and like to reveal his kingdom to you so you can join with him. So just if you would, if you're serious about getting to know Jesus, inviting him into your heart, just pray after me. Lord Jesus, tonight I ask you, come into my heart. Forgive me for all my sin, my sins of commission, my sins of omission. I believe with all my heart God raised you from the dead. The tomb is empty. I confess with my mouth, you're my Savior and Lord. And according to your word, I'm saved. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for being saved. Uh, thank you I've been born of the Spirit, born again. And I ask you to fill me with your Spirit. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer for the first time, we'd sure like to hear from you. Just let us know. And if you did, we certainly want to encourage you, get in a Bible-based teaching church where you can hear the Word and grow and be strong. Amen. So thanks for joining us. Until next time, uh, may the grace of God be with you. In Jesus' name. <laughs>